Hello my soccer universe, I've decided to go first to France and the Netherlands for this weekend's reviews because while in France, as we will see, it was kind of stalemate and going on, uh, still some interesting storylines in there. I thought what happened over the Netherlands, we have three rounds uh, since we had the last time, was really, really, really exciting. And I want to go even as far as that, despite the Bundesliga being rather open up top and there may be potentially, although not quite, a title race in um, England, I think it's the Eredivisie that is the closest up top uh, with the additional caveat that yes at the moment there is Feyenoord uh, traditional power being the favorite um, but unlike the Bundesliga where it's also re re retired it's really the big three plus an AZ and potentially even plus a Twente implicated in there as well add to it tons of goals Ajax the preeminent power in, a power, uh, in crisis having now <laughs> sacked their coach and you have a really, really exciting lead. And I need to mention it also. There was a 10-goal game. An exciting 10-goal game with two Greek hat-tricks happening this weekend. And I was a little bit disappointed. I couldn't watch it. I mean, fortunately, I could see the highlights. But I couldn't watch that one live. I had to actually watch must say play Monaco with a great atmosphere but that was basically the only positive from that game because other than that it was rather dull and with that note on kind of dull for us although I don't want to say dull uh, Liga because it is everything but because we also potentially have a title race there uh, it's just that PSG is so far ahead but in or oh, before we go there uh, to the title race I want to actually start at the Coupe de France where I really didn't see much but we had one big match which was OM against uh, Stade René ending in the 1-0 win through a Gwendouzi goal I again have to, have to, have to say um, even if I wanted to watch the Coupe de France it is sometimes from a visual point of view one of the hardest competitions to watch because of the blanket sponsoring every home team has the same sponsor every away team has the same sponsor they are humongous and they don't fit with anything it is one of the weirdest competitions out there but that was the big one and other than that the big uh, upsets did not really happen it was a rather um, almost runoff of, of the Milk Cup round, which is very unusual for the French Cup. Where remember last year we had, I think, uh, a qual quarterfinal between two fourth division sides or whatever. But you see, uh, Lyon over Chambéry, Lorient only penalties over Bastia is maybe a little bit of a surprise, but in the end, the favorite got through. Uh, Reims, easy uh, to lose. Wearing to lose easy over Ajaxo, Angers uh, coming through, Lille coming through, Auxerre coming through, not also probably against the fifth tier side that they needed penalties was uh, maybe another upset. Um, and then uh, loss also over Brest in another league uh, duel 3 1. Uh, you see, there's no PSG there who had to uh, who played then on Monday a 7 0 win away to uh, Pay de Cassel. I didn't pull a little bit on the on, on there because yes, Mbappé scored many, Neymar scored and whatever, but it was not a contest. I thought that the other games are a little bit more interest, uh, interesting. The most interesting at the Pay de Cassel is that two PSG Ultras are in their team. So, so far, uh, so good. More interesting, I think, will be the next round. Yes, we have only one fourth tier side left, and we have a few Ligue 2 sides who meet with Paris and Annecy. But we have, of course, a Le Classique between OM and PSG, uh, which is the standout fixture. And then also Lorient against Lens. Uh, those are two teams that are relatively high in the table. And then Lyon against Lille, kind of a little bit traditionalist. But uh, if you look at the, at the standings, both of them are behind Lorient and Lens at the moment. So there's also, we have, of course, other Ligue 1 duels between Angers and Nantes, um, with Angers uh, concurrent in last place, maybe not the most exciting one. And then to lose against Raz, yeah, maybe this is an, uh, kind of an outsider duel. But, you know, that will happen in midweek next week. 
Let's look at the past weekend in League 1 uh, and we were, the last time we talked about, I was, we were all the praises for Ren having just beaten PSG and they can do so many great things. Yeah, they can do especially one thing. Lose the Breton Derby to Lorient, 2-0 down at the half through Talbi and Le Bris, and then only pulling one back by a tight and that was that. Renz uh, having a rather turgid week, to be honest, going out of the cup and losing to Lorient. And I'm, yeah, probably need a Lorient jersey uh, as well. But you know, I have another French team coming relatively soon. So that's exciting, at least. I already told you, OM against Monaco, it was great atmosphere. I really, I was totally enjoying this in the run up to the game with all, you know, the Marseille fans always make, making a great atmosphere in the stadium. Uh, there was even a section that was red and white, but I don't think those were Monaco fans. Uh, that is something, but that was basically the spectacle. Um, it started even excitingly uh, with Monaco actually having a little bit more of, of the game. Ben Yedda once clear on goal and then I, I don't know how he got caught again. That was a little a little bit out and they score uh, the go-ahead with an own goal from Ver Vere too. Then uh, Ben Yedda needs to score another one. But then um, the longer the game went, the more ac actually OM got back into the game. They get a deserved equalizer in the 47th through Alexis Sanchez. And then the game fell more or less asleep. And at that point, I'm also, I mean, I had had, had already looked, looked, looked at my phone, the results, and I see that uh, in Holland there is an absolute scorcher going on. And I have to watch this because even the atmosphere fizzled out a little bit. So uh, kind of a little bit of downer there, but you know, don't want to complain too much. Um, other notable results, uh, Nice 1-0 over Lille, um, I think Toulouse, 2-1 at Strasbourg coming back uh, and then Lyon getting a rare win at but the, probably the most uh, notable one was PSG against Stade de Reims. 1-1 one, one, but only tells you half had to because the first half uh, Reims should have taken a commanding lead. PSG playing in the new fourth jersey with all Chinese lettering. I said it already in my Serie A review. I find this an absolute ridiculous thing. This is it just pandering uh, to the masses to buy their, jer their, their jerseys? I I have actually, uh, I had a year where I studied Chinese. I have all the respect for Chinese. However, I have a problem with Chinese letters in a European game. And it's only because we want to celebrate the Chinese New Year, blah, 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 and make a little bit more bucks. I hate that. I really, 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 really hate that. And the PSG jerseys, yeah, you saw my Liga re review. Uh, I didn't like it that much. PSG then took a lead that was at that point against the run rough play uh, through Neymar. I mean, it was a messy shot that Bernard kind of gets the touch on and then Neymar get through, make, make, makes one nil. Then uh, they miss a few chances um, to make it two nil. However, the game was never as clear. Verratti gets sent uh, enough with a straight red for tripping. But when you thought the PSG is a see through, a uh, really bad back pass, uh, I think. What was, was Marquinhos or whatever, uh, you know, in the opposing half. And then uh, the uh, ball gets to Dumbia, who plays it to uh, Balogun. And he runs through and really whacks it in the internet with such a skill. It was actually quite the goal to behold. And PSG remain in crisis because now they have not uh, won in two last two games that they, that they didn't win, that in between was uh, then it was the loss at the beginning of, of the year to loss. Really, really bad start. Whereas uh, if we look at the table, I mean, uh, Marseille have won four now drawn. Uh, also, uh, Lens have been uh, winning more and have had and lost them. It's only Rennes who have lose, uh, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose kind of in a way. And so uh, Rennes is not really in it. I mean, it's still PSG with a commanding lead, but there is some trouble afoot. This squad doesn't look right. Yes, they get Milan Skriniar now. On the bottom, um, we have now Strasbourg being uh, in relegation trouble again. As I said, with four relegated teams, it was always gonna, gonna be a tough, uh, a, a tough one. Although the last three spots kind of seem taken between Ajax Ossia and Angers. So if you have an R in front of your name, of, of a town, it's you're gonna go down. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, my predictions say it's PSG and OM again. I can see it, either, although I always reserve for the right. I think Monaco there could get something going. Uh, Brest at the moment also going down, though. So A and B. So if you're top of the alphabet, 
you're going down in France. We have actually quite a few rounds coming up. I mean, we had the French Cup round, but before that, um, we have uh, the round next weekend where, you know, it's there's maybe not really the big game. Not OM is, pro, is probably the one that sticks out. I, I did this actually midweek, sorry. Uh, my mistakes. Um, Montpellier is always a tough, tough place against PSG. Need a result. Rennes against Strasbourg, you know. Lance against Nice. A few interesting in there. But then on the weekend, uh, we have OM against Nice. That always has a lot of uh, bite to it. I think also Rennes against Lille is in. interesting. And PSG against Toulouse. You know how PSG are doing at the moment. Then comes the cup round. And then we have another round. And I think after that, I will do... Uh, video and we have Monaco against PSG that's a big one and also Lyon against Lens Lyon desperately needing to get back let's move over to the Net Netherlands I was so close of making a video after Feyenoord against Ajax because it was a really really top game it gotta be said uh, but before that, it got some additional uh, oomph with uh, PSV beating Vitesse 1-0. They missed the penalty, but he still um, then made after the half the go-ahead goal. So Kaka after putting on the pressure, and we knew that uh, Z is probably going to beat Fortuna Sittard. Um, and at that point, and also Twente Utrecht, another uh, good game, Feyenoord, and Ajax, I mean, it was a definitely game that Ajax needed to win if they really wanted to not uh, have uh, Feyenoord go away. But the way the game went, the first half, it was all Feyenoord. Ajax were not on the field, completely anemic. The go-ahead goal through Peshaw was a wonderful strike, but they should have scored even before. The atmosphere, brilliant. The one thing that was a little, little bit weird, they put some extra nets on there that were so high that they cut into the camera view. Yeah, those two don't like each other. But what a rabbit at the ad. I don't see this. What's probably one of the best atmospheres I've seen in the Eredivisie in a long time. Add to it that Feyenoord is gunning for the title and it's just amounting to be something, something good. The only time, it was really, it was all Feyenoord in that first, first half. However, there was a double chance for Ajax in there, who, this, which would have been so typically Ajax to take a lead without even deserving it. And... Feyenoord did not kill off the game. And then Klassen comes back. I mean, uh, it was a weird goal. I mean, Bergman runs. Klassen had, had his in him. I think as far as I remember, one could even call it an own goal or, or whatever. So it was a little bit weird going, going, going in. And then again, Ajax gets the point. Uh, hold on. Were better in the second half, but it seemed overall too little. And yeah, there was the chance for Feyenoord to win it. And that's the one, 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 one thing, despite Feyenoord being, and we'll see this now in the uh, up, upcoming results, but Feyenoord being top and looking rather good for, for a title, they also not really, they, had, they have chances to separate themselves and don't really do it. Um, as I said, AZ over uh, Sittard, of course, Pavlidis gets the goal, but this is only the third one. Uh, it's David and Navarro and own goal uh, after Burak Yilmaz, who plays now for Sittard, uh, gets an equalizer for uh, them. Then, midweek round, I actually saw Emmen against PSV and I have to say, uh, totally deserved win for Emmen. Bernadou getting the go-ahead had, had gold. Uh, Mauro Junior being sent off PSV in the first half and the really also very anemic performance. Whereas at the same, well, uh, more, more, more or less than a day later, AZ, very, very convincing against the go-ahead. Uh, again, Pavlidis scoring the go-ahead goal. He is the top scorer in the Netherlands at, at, at the moment. And the game was never re uh, really in doubt with uh, two stop 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 time goals for each of the teams laid on. Uh, entertaining clash between Vitesse and Twente, where both teams had the lead at one point. Feyenoord get the 2-0 win over Nijmegen, who had uh, taken points of Ajax a little bit earlier. 2-0 uh, at the half, uh, Nijmegen won down. Uh, so they saw that one else could separate themselves a little bit more from Ajax, who only manage a 1-1 against Volendam. Lowly Volendam, a team that is in serious relegation trouble, who even took a lead in the 59th minute and only late Kudus goal got it back. And that was... Similarly to much, Schroeder was duly sacked af afterwards. Ajax, at that point, had not won four games in a row. 
really really slow start to the year and basically and basically um losing touch with with the top not being on on the top a team that is used to being on top so alfred schroeder i mean when i saw his re resume because it was one of the, who is who is, who is gonna get the new ajax coach it was schroeder and i look at his resume it did not seem as convincing overall and it kind of came as one uh, could almost expect from from it the good news for ajax is that you know you react now uh and you're not too far off the pace with only you have to go for around uh, but it's only five points off the top so it's still very much in ajax's reach johnny hatinka was uh appointed then uh, the interim manager let's see where this is going and then on the past weekend psv make up 2-0 over the go-ahead Eagles, uh, Wehrmann and El Khazi getting the goals, so PSV also. Ajax's trouble kind of cloud the, um, the bad form that PSV is really in. And of course they lost Gakpo and, 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 and so on, so there is there are reasons for for, for, for for that, but it's still a little bit, um, how to say, surprising that it is going that way. The standout result of this weekend has to be the 5-5. Five, 5-5! Five. Five, five between AZ and Utrecht. This was the first time I saw it. It was 3-2 in the 34th minute for AZ. And I saw 3-3 at the half. A little bit later I saw it's 4-4. Four, four. And then I think I checked the next morning because I, I kind of uh, forgot. I, I don't want to say forgot about it. But you know it was not then on my priorities list. In the morning I said 5-5. Five, five, and I couldn't watch that game. And what's even more impressive is there were two hat-tricks, both by Greek strikers. Uh, Duvikas for Utrecht got the first two goals. They had a 2-0 lead in the 16th. Then Decker and twice Pavlidis. And the two Pavlidis goals also came within four minutes of, of each other. Turning the game around, but the Via Giver uh, equalizes at the half. Then Duvikas, again, go-ahead goal for Utrecht after a goal of his was disallowed for a rather tight offside goal call. And then uh, at that turn, turn it around. I mean, this is a crazy game. 0-2, 3-2, 3-4, 5-4. this with his third, com completing a second Greek hat trick. And then Van de Streek in the 80th. Oh, just two minutes later, absolute crazy equalizer. It's 5-5. I mean, that game... It was, yes, every shot a goal, but I mean, how, how, how exciting can it be? How exciting is the Dutch League that those two teams that, you know, are not the uh, creme de la creme of the Dutch League are playing out such, such, such a great game. And at, the, at the moment, I really would love to see Z doing really, 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 really well. And yes, I need a jersey from both of these teams. Badly. Again, it's more red jerseys. You see my uh, Dutch, <laughs> Dutch teams that has a lot of red and white. And... Unfortunately, with the teams that I want to get, it's more red and white, which is a little bit more boring. Twente actually equalize uh, in the 68th um, against Feyenoord. So it's a 1-1. One, one. Again, a little bit points drop. But the Twente is a team that's up there. They are just a point behind Ajax, who got a very important win at Excelsior. Uh, who, of course, down there. Not an easy game, to be honest. Uh, but... It was 1-1, one, one, but just before they have class and Ghost gets the goal, Gregor and Kudis, once he make, may, make, makes it 3-1, uh, there was a sigh of relief. And, you know, Ajax finally can get a win 4-1 overall. Um, one thing that came a little bit of a surprise, I just want to mention, because I see Volendam, who are down there, are beating Groningen 3-2. Groningen I really desperate need, need for me. They are, at the moment very much going down and that's also a rather traditional team at least for me uh, in the netherlands in trouble so you see the table it is feyenoord at the moment to lose although ajax getting a little bit back there's psv and az in there wouldn't be funny if az wins it although I, honestly i would love to see feyenoord win this one not only because Traun is there but you know this is a, it is a team a little bit like sporting that gets a little bit lost now between behind psv and ajax but also a title for az i think i would enjoy quite some and that comes from someone who at least in europe always is behind ajax but um i think i could enjoy this quite some and it is exactly fair not that are with a four point diff difference already uh expected div 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 difference um scheduled to go ahead and you see there is 
the top five, there's, a, there's kind, kind of a cluster. Everyone could go in the championship, and then Utrecht, Sparta, Dorska go into the playoffs for the Conference League. Two weeks I have to show you to go uh, to go ahead because that's when I make the, we have first of all a makeup game to Valvik and the go ahead Eagles and then on the weekend we have another big one between Feyenoord and PSV and the way it's scaling with I always have a big, big one on a, a week where I'm not expecting to shoot the video after but hey we did it for Feyenoord Ajax so Feyenoord PSV really 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 big game uh, could go a long way of deciding the championship I would say but I'll never look uh, at that is for real I want to say 20 will probably also win and I would expect Ajax to win over Cambuur as well then uh, in the Eredivisie a week later and uh, I showed that that, that, that that first we have kind kind of a round where all the um, big ones have um, clear uh, opponents with AZ playing against Excelsior, PSV against Groningen, Herrenveen against Feyenoord, two teams that I <laughs> have here should also be uh, easy and Ajax against Valwijk and Twente against Volendam. So yeah, we test against Utrecht probably kind of an in-between there. But we also have the Dutch Cup and what's the first fixture that they receive? They pull it down 5-5 five, five penalties. <laughs> AZ against Utrecht are meeting, meeting again. What a great game. Uh, we also have Twente against Ajax, which is the pick of the round. PSV against Emmen, yeah. Chance to make up for the loss that you just uh, had. And Feyenoord against uh, Nijmegen, we also had that uh, just right, right now. Of course, there are some very interesting teams from the lower divisions, uh, especially the Tweede Divisie with, with the Treffers, Spakenburg and Katwijk. I just want to mention them and one of those will make it into the quarter finals long video but fully deserved what is happening in the airlines really has me gripped uh, and really wants me to spend some euros on dutch teams finally because i need a few more dutch teams i think the dutch league is actually quite collectible in a way if there were a little bit more colors at the moment for the top teams because all red that's the only thing that bugs, bugs, bugs me but I have not really gone for more. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon. So you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.